So let's say you love playing Arms Warrior in World of Warcraft and want to try out Star Wars The Old Republic, but you are not sure which class to pick. Don't worry, because I will explain you all the classes in the game and which of them are similar to your favorite World of Warcraft class. First of all, instead of Alliance and Horde, Sotor has two factions which are called Republic and Empire. Both factions can play all the classes in the game, but the story quests and a lot of the social features such as skills and chat are faction locked. So if you want to play with your friends, make sure to pick the same faction. In this game, classes are called combat styles and specializations are called disciplines. This should be very familiar to you coming from WoW. Just like the warrior in WoW has three specs, protection, arms and fury, the juggernaut combat style in Sotor has three disciplines called Immortal, Rage and Vengeance. But in Star Wars you can have two combat styles per character. That would be as if you could respect from an arms warrior to a sub rogue. It does not mean that you can use warrior abilities on a rogue class, nope sorry, but you can switch classes between PvP matches or between pools in the raid. So you can try out a bunch of different specs without needing to level an alt. The final thing that you need to know is that you can only combine two force classes or two tech classes on one character. To give an example, that means you can combine the force users Juggernaut and Marauder, but you cannot combine the force using Juggernaut with a tech using Mercenary. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's look at the combat styles starting with the force users. The first one is the Juggernaut, which would be most similar to the Warrior. The Juggernaut has three specs. The first one is called Rage. Now, as I already said, Rage is a melee class, which has good burst, somewhat good durability and very high sustained damage. The class that I would most compare it to is probably the Arms Warrior in Warcraft. They are quite similar. Instead of Fury as a resource, you build Rage. So it's your classic builder spender playstyle, but overall not the fastest highest APM rotation. So if you like playing Arms Warrior, you should be quite familiar with the Rage Juggernaut. The next Juggernaut spec is called Vengeance. And that's a melee damage over time spec, which has a lot of AOE potential. It is probably the most similar to a Blood Decay in Warcraft with its dots and self heal, or maybe also the Unholy Decay because of its AOE burst damage. And finally, Immortal is the tank discipline of the Juggernaut class. And that one is probably most similar to the Protection Warrior, has quite good DPS for a tank, can be squishy if you don't block, which is called Defend in this game. So you need to make sure to use your defensives proactively. A model Juggernaut might also be to the liking of Protection Pala players, because it does have a lot of CC and is quite good at trolling people with abilities such as Force Push. The second Force using melee class is the Marauder. And the Marauder has three specs, the first one of which is called Fury. Fury Marauders are very similar to Rage Juggernauts, except that the Marauder uses two lightsabers. So if you're an Arms Warrior player, you might also enjoy the Fury Marauder. But then Fury is also quite similar to, let's say, the Mistwalker Monk, because it does have very good target switching, high mobility, but the utility is not the best. The AoE is okay, it also has a single target ability that can be talented into a cleave, However, Fury is not one of the best single target specs currently in the game. The second Marauder Discipline is called Carnage and this one you might enjoy if you are a Fury Warrior Enjoyer. Carnage, as all Marauders, is a dual wielding class that has a lot of movement speed buffs. So if you enjoy a high APM playstyle with good DPS mobility, then Carnage might be the spec for you. Finally, we have Annihilation Marauder. That one is a melee based dot class and it is the go-to class for PvE. If you enjoy PvP, I would not recommend Annihilation because it can be quite hard to get your damage off. You might enjoy Annihilation if you are an Assassination Rogue main or maybe also if you play Unholy DK. The final melee for the Force users is the Assassin. Now the first Assassin spec is called Deception. It is most similar to the Subtlety Rogue even has some very similar abilities, for example Shadow Stride and Maul, which does more damage when used from behind. Sounds familiar? Then you might enjoy Deception Assassin. Hatred, of course, as all Assassin classes, does also have Stealth. It does have excellent single target DPS, but not as much burst, and it is not as tanky. 
You might enjoy Hatred if you enjoy Assassination Rogue or maybe Unholy DK. It has some similar gameplay mechanics, the great single target DPS but slow target switching for example. Also Hatred does not have the best mobility, but unfortunately unlike the DK it is not tanky at all. Darkness is the tank discipline of the Assassin combat style. It is an avoidance tank and has a lot of self sustain, but not the best single target damage. Blood Decay or Vengeance Demon Hunter players might enjoy Darkness, so if you enjoy those specs, give Darkness a try. And now we're moving on to the first range class and the only forest using range discipline in the game is Sorcerer. Sorcerer has three specs, two of which are DPS specs and one of which is a healer spec. The first DPS spec is called Lightning and this is your classic caster. So if you're playing Fire Mage and you enjoy high mobility, great defensives, or maybe you like playing Elemental Shaman, Destrolock, something like this, then you might be at home with the Lightning Sword. Lightning Sword is also similar to the Fire Mage in the way that it has two builds and it does have to give up single target damage to improve its AoE, but overall it's a very powerful class, so if you enjoy the Mage playstyle, then Lightning is the class for you. Madness Sorg is one of the strongest disciplines in the game right now. It is most similar to the Frost Mage because it does have great survivability, very good mobility and even burst. Maybe the Affliction Lock is an even better comparison with its dot playstyle or maybe the Shadow Priest except that Madness has better mobility and doesn't have to manage anything like the Shadow Form. Finally, Corruption is the heal discipline of the Sorcerer class. Based on my experience, it's more similar to the Mistweaver Monk. It's very mobile, has good sustained single target heal, does have great defensive cooldowns, which make it formidable both in PvE and PvP. Another comparison would be the Holy Priest. So similar to that, Corruption is very good at reactive burst and group healing, but it is not the best when your team is spreading out, because it doesn't have any significant healing over time that it can spread. Next up, we are moving on to the tech users. Now remember that you cannot combine these with the force users that we discussed earlier. So if you only want to level one character, then you need to choose between the first four classes that we discussed. However, if shooting lightning from your fingertips or moving objects around purely by force of will is not the most important thing to you, then you should have a look at the tech combat styles. Starting with the melees, and here the first one is the power tech class. The first discipline for power techs is called advanced prototype. This one is most similar to an Enhancement Shaman, as it is very bursty but reliant on its cooldowns. Other comparisons would be a Frost Decay or maybe a Red Paladin with wings, where you just pop a big cooldown and then DPS on people. I also think that Arcane Mage players might enjoy APPT, because the playstyle revolves around high burst damage, but also group utility and mobility. Similar to mages, APPTs also don't have any significant self-heal. And if you mess up your resource, you are in trouble. APPT is also not a real melee class because it does have 15 meters range on some core abilities. So maybe if you are a balanced druid enjoyer, you might also like APPT. Pyrotech PT has excellent single target DPS, but is quite slow on target switching, being a damage over time based class. It is on the lower end of mobility, but it is very tanky, very durable, both in PvE and PvP. Now out of all of the classes that I looked at for similarities, I guess you could mention the Outlaw Rogue, because similar to that, Pyro has very good sustained DPS and also high cleave damage. However, it does require resource management. Next up, we have Shield Tech, and that's the tanking discipline of the Power Tech class. Shield Tech is a very beefy boy and I would compare it mostly to the Brewmaster Monk or maybe the Guardian Druid, so your classic mitigation tank. Protection Paladin players might also enjoy the Shield Tech tank because they usually forget to die and are very good at trolling people by pulling them into fire or various asset traps. Next up we have the Operative class and here we are starting with Concealment. Concealment is also very similar to the Subtlety Rogue in my opinion, it even has an ability called Backstab and as all operatives it has access to stealth. I also think that Vengeance Demon Hunter players might enjoy Concealment because the playstyle revolves around good opening burst, high mobility, self-sustain and a good solo capability. Lethality Operative is a damage over time based stealth class with a mix of melee and ranged attacks. As such, I think that Feral Druid players would probably enjoy Lethality 
The Eternity has very strong AoE, it has off heal, has strong survivability and mobility and is one of the best classes for PvP right now. However, if you go the AoE route, then your single target damage will not be the best, so it requires some tweaking for PvE. Finally, we have the Medicine Operative and that one is very similar to the Resto Druid because of its reliance on proactive healing over time. In PvP, Medicine Operatives are not in the best spot right now, but depending on when you watch this video, this might change in the future. For PvE, they are a very strong option, particularly for group healing. Next up we have the mercenary and the first mercenary spec is called Arsenal. Now this is your second classic ranged caster. I would compare it mostly to the marksman hunter because it is quite straightforward, it has decent single target burst and Arsenal is also quite survivable. So if you enjoy that playstyle and you don't want to play a sorcerer then Arsenal mercenary might be for you. Next up we have innovative ordnance. And IO has a little bit of everything, it is kind of a jack of all trades, does have decent mobility, crowd control, does have an defensive immunity. So it is the kind of spec for people that want a challenge, for people that are maybe want to play something outside of the meta. So maybe if you're enjoying survival, you're enjoying Beastmaster Hunter or even Demonology. While IO doesn't have any pets to manage, it is one of the classes with the most keybinds and the most skill expression in this game. So if that sounds like you, maybe check out the IO Mercenary. And finally we have Bodyguard, which is the healing discipline of the Mercenary class. Bodyguard is a very tanky healer that excels in grouped up fights where there's not a lot of mobility needed. As such I would mostly compare it to the Holy Pala or maybe the Resto Shaman. It is very strong right now and a good option if you want to try out healing in this game. And finally we have the last of the tech combat styles the sniper. The marksman sniper is most similar to the marksman hunter, I mean it even has the same name, or maybe the destro lock. It is quite straightforward to play, however it is not the most powerful of specs right now, but it can be fun to play and is actually one of the most mobile classes in the game. If you prefer damage over time then virulent sniper might be for you. In that way it is most similar to the madness sorcerer or the affliction lock if you're coming from WoW. It's a very versatile spec, it is good in PvE and PvP, it can do damage to multiple targets over time and it does have the best survivability out of all of the sniper specs. So if you're into a ranged dot playstyle and you want to play a tech class then virulence might be the choice for you. And finally we have engineering. Engineering has the best on demand burst in the game, has good AoE potential, so maybe if you're enjoying playing something like a distro lock then engineering might be the class for you. Also engineering is very good at zone control as it does have an spammable AoE slow. So it is quite good at countering melees and overall a very strong pick for both PvP and PvE right now. Okay, these were all the classes. As opposed to wow, your race does not matter in this game, so pick whatever looks coolest to you. And the final thing is that in Sotor there are so-called mirror classes. Meaning that all the abilities, talents and the whole gameplay of the Juggernaut is basically the same as the Republic variant, the Guardian. Just that the names and animations are different. That's it for today guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys tomorrow.